Easter eggs in Call of Duty Zombies. A quest that can even prove to be a challenge to the most veteran of players. However, a question that many have asked but dare attempt, is it possible to complete every easter egg from World at War all the way to Black Ops 3 in just 24 hours? After looking around on the internet for days it seemed that no one had even dared attempt it, in fear that they might not make it to the other side. Is this where the trail ends? Will this challenge ever see its completion? Boys and lads, after days and days of editing, I bring you can you beat every easter egg in 24 hours? That's right lads, I was actually dumb enough to make this video. We have 15 easter eggs we need to complete through World of War all the way to Black Ops 3. And while some of these are quite easy, there were some that really pushed us to our limits. <coughs> and you know, before anyone asked in the comment sections, the reason I didn't include Black Ops 4 and Cold War is because I'm pretty sure if we did that, it would actually make this challenge impossible. Especially when I consider our skill level. I mean, this video is already a struggle, so you know, including Black Ops 4 and Cold War, I'd be looking like Milo after playing Vanguard. Anyways, the challenge starts at 6.30 and it ends at 6.30 the next day. There's no stopping the timer for breaks or anything like that, so this is going to be a test of endurance. However, I knew going into this, I wouldn't be able to do it on my own, you know, I'm just a man, a mortal. So I I went on the search for, you know, where all the good men had gone and where were all the gods? And, you know, where was the streetwise Hercules to help me fight the rising odds? With my team assembled, we were ready to jump into this challenge, where we had our first easter egg, Doris. As we waited for the time to hit 6.30, we were actually looking forward to doing this challenge, however at the same time, we were kind of nervous about what maps were to come. Realistically, you know, we just had to get this quick first mini easter egg out the way, you know, so we could actually move on to the real me. I mean, Doris, this should be easy, like five minutes in and out job, it wasn't. Shaking in his little booty. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh my god. So, yeah, it actually kind of took us about 20 minutes to finish Doris. I honestly forgot how how hard World at War can be at times with its wonky mechanics, but you know, don't worry, after nearly 18 minutes we finally had a pack a punch gun and could start on the easter egg. From here on out it was pretty simple, you know, you just shoot the panel outside the map and then shoot the toys around the map. To be completely honest with you, we probably took longer on this step than we should have because Tyler and Matt weren't as familiar with the World at War flytrap, you know. They thought they were in the same locations as they are in Black Ops 3, but you know, after 20 minutes we'd shot all the toys and had finally finished the first easter egg in Call of Duty Zombies. So, after our embarrassing start on Doris, we were ready to redeem ourselves and really get into the beat of this video. We finally managed to get the peaceful zombies into our lobby and we were ready to get through these Black Ops 1 easter eggs. So, obviously we're going to be starting with Ascension and with this being the first main easter egg, it's honestly not as difficult compared to easter eggs you'll see later on in this video. Realistically, all we need to do is just get lucky with our box bins and, you know, this should be a piece of cake. So, let's go ahead and see how our run's looking so far. Oh, oh shit. Oh, of what? Course. Why did you That's pick him up? <laughs> Out of uh, every possibility, the one oh, my game crashed. Yeah, don't yeah. the CZs. <laughs> yeah, don't pick up the dual wield CZs. They crashed oh, the game. Yeah, we learned real quick that the dual wield CZ 75s were gonna be the devil throughout Black Ops 1. And honestly, we ended up avoiding it like the plague. Honestly, we've never experienced so much anxiety when hitting the box after this point. Whenever I would hit the box, I would always be scared that I'd just brainlessly pick it up throughout any of these runs. But to be fair, it was probably better to learn this early on in the run instead of like really late on. So yeah, running it back, we finally got back to hitting the box, and we didn't get awful look at the start. We actually got Gersh's quite early and ended up throwing it at the machine at the 40 minute mark. Honestly, so far so good. We just need to get some good weapons and we could actually be off this map pretty quick. On the first monkey round, we also got the button step completed. And after that, we immediately went underneath the pad near the rocket to complete that step as well. However, the next step did cause us a few issues as we had to redo the step. For some reason, while taking the Lunar Landers, the last letter just didn't get picked up. So that was a bit of a time loss, but overall, the run was actually going pretty well. Until the final step. Right, here we go, boys. Right, go. I don't. I can't see Yo, shit. I can't see it. What is Let's going keep on? Going. Here? Keep going. Can the power room be like? Did we do it? 
So yeah, after this we kind of realized we didn't have enough firepower to complete this next step, which meant we actually had to start hitting the box again to try and get the ray gun. Or you know, the Matryoshkas, anything that would just do enough damage so we can finish up this easter egg. So every now and then we would get a new piece of equipment and we'd retry it, and we ended up failing the step five times. I think at this point we knew that we all needed to have the ray gun, and we tried every single ray gun every time trick and it just was not working. But finally, an hour and 30 minutes into this entire challenge, I finally got the ray gun, and let's just say I was a bit too excited. I might need to max ammo. I got the ray gun! I'm about to fucking go! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's just move on from that. Tyler also got the ray gun after me, so we were finally ready to complete this egg once and for all. Maybe for... Uh, is Wait. it gone? It's, it's gone. It's gone. Let's it's gone. go. Let's go. We did it. Let's go. We did it. Let's go. <laughs> and with that, we finally got our death machines and ended the game immediately, jumping onto our next map. Next up was Call of the Dead, and now if you've seen anything Call of the Dead related on this channel, I don't really have the best experience playing this map, especially when it comes to the Easter egg. What? 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 What even happened? What even happened? So, you know, I was already worried going into this map, and I think after realizing how long it took us on the Ascension Easter egg, we were all a bit anxious and how long this would actually take us, but we were determined to complete this challenge, so we powered on. So, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my teammates under the bus here, but Cool the Dead was pretty much carried by me, as the other three didn't really have as much experience doing the Easter egg as me, but beside that, it went relatively smoothly. The first few steps, like finding the fuse, blowing up the generators, and finding the vodka bottle were pretty simple, and we had no issues completing these. Where our first challenge occurs is with the dial step in the lighthouse. Now, let me go on a little rant about how this step makes no goddamn sense. Honestly, this step makes absolutely no sense to me, so I'm just gonna let Code Dame Pizza take it away and explain this step to you. The lighthouse has four floors, and on each floor is a different dial with a different color. The bottom floor has a purple dial, and you're gonna turn that dial to the number six. Now make your way to the second floor, which should have a blue dial on it. Count how many times you would have to turn that dial until it got to the number four, but don't actually turn it. Once you know how many times you would have to turn it to get to the number four, make your way to the third floor where the orange dial is, and turn the orange dial that many times. Then, while you're still there, and after you've turned it that many times, look how many more times you would have to turn that dial to get to the number seven, but don't turn it. Make your way to the fourth floor, which should have a yellow dial, and turn it that many times. Now look at how many times you would have to turn that yellow dial to get to the number two. And go ahead, turn the yellow dial to the number two, but remembering how many times you turned it. Now make your way to floor one, which is the purple dial, and turn the purple dial that many times as well. Then go back to the second floor, which is the blue dial, and turn that to the number four. You will now have completed that step, and the numbers that you should have from top to bottom floors are two, seven, four, six. This like, actually, what is this? Why do you have to do this in some random order? It genuinely doesn't make any sense, but you know, I digress. Peace did the step originally, but I ended up redoing it for him as he didn't do it right the first time, but you know boys, in the end we finally got it. The next up was the radio step, that was pretty straightforward, and then the foghorn step went just as good as well. And you know, typical with these runs, all good things come to an end, and the end was actually our luck. We spent ages trying to get the VR11, and that seems to be the ongoing trend with these runs. It always kind of seems to be the mystery box that screws us over, but once we finally had it, we had everything we needed to finish this easter egg. We shot a zombie to get the VR11 man and blasted him with all we had, and after that we picked up the golden rod and gave it to the boys inside the door. Now for us to consider this easter egg completed, we wanted to get the wonder wolf. And as you're about to see in this clip here, we just about barely got it before we ended up dying. No. Completed. So I oh, no, you died. got it, you got it, you got it, you got it, you had it, you had it. No, I died, I died. <laughs> you had it. Yeah, we did it, yeah, let's go. And again, that's another egg done. So far, it's only taken us three hours, definitely longer than what we've expected, but honestly, we're on good pace to complete this challenge. So, going on to Shangri-La now, I knew that this one was going to be a struggle, as other than me, our team basically had no knowledge on what to do in this. So while everyone else was scanning through the no-nonsense guide, I had this easter egg memorised like it was the back of my hands. And with knowing all the steps, I also knew all of the trouble that came with it. The Shangri-La easter egg starts off simple enough, you just go ahead, turn on the power, enter into a clip mode, press this random button on the wall, and then you go ahead and match the symbols on the floor on each side of the map. And with a bit of explaining to my team, we had this step completed by the 3 hours and 6 minute mark. After this went back into Eclipse to do the next step, which was also super easy, as all you had to do was have three players stand at the bottom of the water slide while one person went down the water slide while hitting a switch. So far, so good. Honestly, I'm surprised we haven't run into that much trouble. Just kidding, this is actually where we started panicking as we had to rely on Box Look again for this next step, which required us to get the 3179 JGB215, which honestly, in my opinion, seems to be the most rare wonder weapon to get out of the box in any Call of Duty zombie map. We got it really fast. Uh, I got the Baby Maker. 
Oh my god. No way. That's right, lads. It finally seemed like our box look had changed for the better as we got the 3179 JGB215 really quick, which is good as it means that we can move on to the next step right away. Although we got some pretty good luck here, I'm honestly getting a bad feeling though as I don't really see this luck keeping up for too long. Either way, we went back into the Eclipse mode, shot the crystal down with the 3179 JGB215 and followed it through the Geister to finish that step as well. Now, for the record, this next step is actually one of the worst steps I've ever seen in a Call Zombies Easter egg. Essentially, for this step, you need to release four gas pipes around the map and lead a napalm through them all while in eclipse mode and now obviously with Shangri-La being one of the most close quartered maps in all of Call of Duty Zombies history this is going to make this step a massive pain in the ass however surprisingly it went pretty well we had Matt training a zombie while I let the napalm down and yeah honestly we got off that step pretty quick yep they got they got put now I pulled it did yeah, you hear yeah, a quote? Yeah, I heard the quote. I heard the quote. We then went ahead and bought the spike moors and took them over to the waterfall to plug up the holes in the wall. Me and Peace ended up getting a step done pretty quickly, and then we actually went ahead and broke the rules, lads, by pressing the do not press button. Then we go on to the next step. This step should be the most easy thing in the entire world. Essentially, what you have to do is you have to go into the mud pit and you have to set the dials on the wall to the correct numbers, these being 16, 4, 3, and 1. However, something went wrong in our games, and for some reason, the dials just were not entering properly and we spent a solid 40 minutes going in and out of eclipse mode trying anything we could maybe just maybe to get the game to magically start working and then we started thinking to ourselves maybe we just missed this step and we watched every single youtuber's guide on this egg and i mean everyone mr ruffle waffles glitching queed even yoti slayer rest his soul and we followed every single one of their guides to a t what did we miss was the game just broken at this point we were convinced our morale had gone down and we started to lose hope was this game just gonna go to waste i gave the team the decision do you quit this game now and retry not to waste any more time or do we keep trying in hopes that it just randomly starts working it seemed like this was the end of the road for this attempt i'm actually about to fucking shoot myself if this works i am so done wait what did we discover while i was gone just just i really hope this works he saw this comment on reddit and now he's cooking he refuses to elaborate oh I heard something. my I heard something. Dude, what did you do? Dude, you are not ready for this, all right? Look, I'm gonna show you. There was literally a little ye yellow radio on here you had to interact with. A radio. You have to interact with one radio for this step to work. And I want to point out, by the way, that not a single guide says you have to do this. Not even one. So if any big YouTuber sees this, please add this to the description so people don't have to find a random Reddit post to solve this part of the Easter egg. Thank you from the entire zombie community. <sighs> Anyways, our morale was boosted one more time to push through to the end of this egg. We entered the clips mode and hit the gongs that were correct and got us the dynamite. Matt then went ahead and shot the new crystal above the mud pit and shrunk the big meteorite. We placed the dynamite by the pack-a-punch and exited Eclipse. Doing pack-a-punch one more time allowed me to pick up the meteorite, closing out this easter egg once and for all. We started Moon 4 hours and 38 minutes into this challenge, and to be honest, we were still a bit down on the morale from Shangri-La, and knowing we needed as much RNG as possible for Moon, it really just made us want to get it over and done with and move on to Black Ops 2. So we didn't waste any time, alright? We immediately went and did Simon Says and got the hack in the terminals in the labs. After that, you technically have to wait till Tunnel 6 is breached, but we had some other steps we could do while we waited. During our wait for Tunnel 6, we actually did manage to get Gersh's and QEDs from the mystery box, which was good as that was two of the three things we needed to complete this easter egg. We then went back to area 51 and threw the gushes at the plates outside of the map. This allows us to go back to spawn and throw the QEDs near the quick revive machine and teleport them to the PC in the same room. We then went and found the wire and after putting in the golden rod we started talking to the PC to get that step going as well. And at this point we actually had nothing left to do but wait for tunnel 6 to be breached. And of course with our luck that was the last excavator to fall. And now this became an issue as Matt decided to decompress the entire spawn room which made it really hard for me at least because I was the one with the hacker. But Matt made up for this goober move by getting the wave gun so you know he gets a pass for this one literally the wave gun you got the wave gun and then finally after waiting what felt like forever tunnel six was finally breached which meant we could continue on with the easter egg we liked the ball around for a bit and shot it with the wave gun and made our way to the pyramid and started filling up the canister with zombie souls and after filling up the first canister we pulled the lever and released samantha giving us our death machine but we weren't done yet as we wanted to go all the way with this easter egg we filled the other canisters one last time and put the golden rod into the pyramid transferring richthofen and samantha's souls and after we interacted with the simon says machine one more time we threw the QEDs at the pyramid and then threw a gush at the Simon Says machine, launching the missiles at the earth. Here it is. There we go. 
No That's way, so insane. homie. And with that, our Black Ops 1 journey was finally over. Six hours and 12 minutes into the run and we could finally move on to the game we were waiting for. Surely it can't go as bad as Black Ops 1, right? Well, going into Black Ops 2, we were definitely ready for a change in games, however, I don't think there was anything that could prepare us for what was ahead. I know it doesn't seem like a lot on paper, but 6 hours of non-stop easter eggs was becoming kind of draining for us. For the record, that's nearly a whole school day or around 100 on Black Ops 3. We were definitely starting to feel the effects of this challenge, but now we have to play one of the worst maps in Call of Duty Zombies, Transit. Now, I think the opinion on Transit in the community has actually shifted in recent years. Going from being the most hated map on everyone's list, to some would view it having this chance that if you played with some friends just goofing about, it can actually be a lot of fun. But as a little spoiler, after beating this easter egg, I can conclude that this easter egg alone made us nearly want to quit the entire challenge. Let me explain. You see, the transit easter egg on paper is actually easy, it's about 7 steps, one of them just being turning on the power, but it's what these steps are that really pushed us. And a key factor to what played into that was our team's knowledge. So the two things we definitely needed to build was the jet gun and the nav card table. I was once again pretty much the only person on the team who knew where all of the jet gun pieces were were off by heart, and at first getting the jet gun doesn't seem that bad, you just have to go around pick up 5 parts, yeah it can be annoying, but at the end of the day it really isn't that bad. Having to do it multiple times over and over again, all I'm gonna say The definition of insanity is, insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting oh, shit. shit to change. That is crazy. It was draining to say the least. And due to the massive map size, it is just a lot of running. And you know, if that was the only buildable you had to get, then it wouldn't be too bad. But no, you also need to build the nav card table in the middle of this random ass cornfield. So two buildables, all with multiple parts on the biggest map, all done by pretty much one person. It was not fun. Granted, Peace and Tyler came around by the last few attempts and briefly understood where all of the parts were, but geez, the amount of times I had to do it on my own for us to just fail the attempt and start over was exhausting. But after multiple failed attempts, we finally had everything in place. You know what, I even had EMPs. We shot the jet gun under the tower and simply needed to get explosive kills. You know, things were starting to look up and I thought maybe this could be the run. Yep. Oh. Yep, just another setback, and you know what, that one really hurt. One hour and 40 minutes in, and we were genuinely considering skipping transit for now and maybe coming back later, but I really didn't want to come back and experience this dog shit of a map, so I rejoined the game, I powered through, we continued to get the explosive kills, and we moved on to the final step. And now this last step is another one that really pushed us to our limits. For the last step, you needed to get the EMPs out of the box, and with our past experiences, we were not looking forward to this, considering that we all needed to get them. And to make things worse, every Every single time we failed the step, we would need to pray to the RNG gods that we would get a max ammo so we could actually attempt it again. But in the end, I managed to get the EMPs and so did Peace, so then it was just hoping that the rest of our team could get some good luck and get them too. But then, we remember that you can actually do this with two players, we just have to throw an EMP, teleport and then immediately throw another. It was going to take some goddamn good timing, but it wasn't impossible. Three, two, one, throw him. We did it! We did it! We got it! I got the quote that says, Yeah, you did it! Look, and we did it! Oh my- Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh. And that right there marked the end of transit. It took basically around two hours to complete and it was genuinely painful. Honestly, all I can really hope for is that after this map, it just gets easier. So yeah, we got off this god awful map and we moved on to the next map, which was Die Rise. So if you were paying very close attention, you would see that we lost Tyler. He was a trooper, but his time had come. His girlfriend snatched him away from us and that left a massive hole in our team. And with the next map needing four players, it looked like we weren't able to continue until he was back. That's right boys, we found the fourth, so that meant that we can continue with the easter eggs to not waste any more time. Potentially not having a fourth made me get worried that maybe we might not be able to complete this challenge on time, so being able to jump right into the next map was a massive W. So you know, we boot into the game, and of course we started off with plenty of failed attempts. Wait, if, if he dies with the stick with fire, we literally have to restart, because I'm not hitting the box for it. Yeah, I don't... 
you know what, those days are behind us. Going on to an actual good attempt, we immediately went down the elevator in the spawn room and got to work on getting the sliquifier. I of course picked it up because I'm the content creator and we headed back up to get the trample steam. For this easter egg again you'd need to build the nav card table but in one of our failed attempts we actually had built it so it just stuck into this game. We then all went and found a symbol on an elevator and after some timing from everyone we were able to all stand on it at the same time and complete that step too. We then got the SVU and shot the balls out of the dragon's mouths and then shot them with a sliquifier to make them all slippery. Yes, you heard me correctly. Honestly, so far so good. We had already failed this multiple times up to this point, so we kind of already knew what the early steps were. It was just trying to get that one good run so we could finish up this map. And although all was going well, we seemed to struggle with this next step. In short, all you need to do is place a trample steam down on a symbol on the ground and get kills with it. However, I don't know why it was so difficult for some members of the team to understand this, but it was just not happening. My personal theory is that after just playing zombies for hours trying to get easter eggs done with no real thoughts behind what we were actually doing. It especially just made our brains go mush and it was just not working. Uh, ex except for you Belk, you were, you were just shit. Anyways, after a while we finally managed to get this step done and we went on to arguably the hardest step of this easter egg if you don't understand it. This step being the Mahjong tiles. We bought the Galva Knuckles and went up to the tower. I personally didn't understand this step so I just left it up to peace. The best way that I can explain this step is that there's Mahjong tiles around the map that correspond to different directions and numbers and then you need to match up these Mahjong tiles and that basically will give you a code and then you punch the side of the tower that has the right directions in the right order. So at this point we knew two of the placements guaranteed. So essentially we could just do a trial and error for the last two placements. It was a 50-50 chance. We could immediately skip the round as well if in case we got it wrong and we could just get the right combination and move on. But like surely you'd think this is the run right? South, east, west, north. South, east, other one. Yeah this west, one. West, north. Oh fuck. That literally did not work. That's right, somehow the peaceful zombies messed up on a 50-50. How? But no worries, right? We can just try again next round. We died. That's right, we actually failed on the very last step. This was incredibly demotivating for us as we really didn't want to go through all that again, but for the sake of this challenge and for the sake of content, we did it anyways. So we booted it up and everything went really smoothly. We actually got through the easter egg pretty quick, meaning we were back at the Mahjong step. But this time, this time was different. While we were completing all the other steps, I was out here watching No Nonsense Guide tutorials on this step to make sure that we 100% had it done this turn. And after making sure we definitely had the 4 digit code, here it was. We were ready to enter the code and after putting it in... East, South, North, West. Oh my fucking god, thank the lord, dude. It was finally over. Almost 12 hours into this challenge and we'd have finally gotten off die rise. This officially marked the halfway point in our time limit and we still had quite a few maps left to go. So moving on to Mob of the Dead, it finally gave us an opportunity to bring back some time. Mob of the Dead is a fan favourite and the easter egg is really simple. So simple in fact that the first time I ever did this easter egg it was actually in the public lobby and some guy just did it for me. We knew this was our chance to save some time. So we got to speedrunning, getting this easter egg done in under 40 minutes. Matt also took a break during this time and Tyler rejoined us. We immediately got to work building the plane and because everyone was so familiar with how the map played, we had the retriever and were on the plane in just 9 minutes. We also spent no time on the bridge on our first go over. This was so that we can get back and we can just immediately get on to refuel in the plane. As the first step in this easter egg is actually just to ride the plane three times. So on our third time over we did get pack a punch and got all set up and honestly we were pretty much at the end of the easter egg. We picked up the spoon and made our way down to the citadel where we entered the numbers and followed the tapes all the way up to the rooftop. I know it seems like I'm just skipping past Mama the Dead compared to the other maps but we genuinely were speed running this map. And as I said this easter egg really isn't that complex. It only has about three or four steps. Either way we got ourselves set up and went into afterlife to ride the plane one last time. If you beat the Mob of the Dead easter egg before, you'll know that the three gangsters turn against Weasel. And with Tyler playing as the Weasel, this is what happened. Dude, this guy's a li straight line through his teeth, dude. Oh, bro. Yeah, oh. Black. yeah, I kind of feel bad, but I genuinely don't think you can actually win as Weasel unless the rest of your team is like actual eight-year-old. But anyways, in just 40 minutes, we were finally onto our last Victus map, Buried.
So booting up into Buried, I was actually quite excited to do this easter egg. I haven't done this easter egg in years, so to go back and try and complete it again actually made me pretty excited. The hope is that this and Origins will boost our morale ready for Black Ops 3 so we can actually complete this challenge. We started the easter egg by gathering all of the pieces for the guillotine. Prior to actually starting this challenge, we actually made a google document with all of the steps for all of the easter eggs, which was nice as it meant everyone can kind of chip in and help find all the parts. We then got the hit in the box in hopes that we can get the paralyzer and the time bomb, and the long shot perma perk with the sniper actually made it really easy to get point so hitting the box wasn't that bad in this map but yeah milk actually got it pretty early which meant we could start filling up the crystal balls around the map and after filling up the last crystal ball the lantern started floating around the map so we just had to throw a grenade at it which then let us pick it up the next step was actually pretty straightforward all you have to do is just get witches kills and so after enough witches kills the lantern had been filled which allowed us to just place it on this random rooftop which revealed the code so we could do the next step so after buying the galva knuckles we started hitting the signs in the mine in the right order but this whole next step actually proved to be a bit of a challenge for our team at first it was just a simple case of you know misreading the code you know no worries i had to Double checked it and you know I made sure we had the right code this time. But then we failed a few times after this just following the whisper round. So I went ahead and bought Vulture's Aid as that allows you to see it through the walls and that made this step a lot easier. And after a few tries we managed to get the wisp to go all the way to the guillotine. So for the record I think this next step is actually one of the coolest steps in all of Call of Duty Zombies history. Something about just going to round infinity showing that the zombies will just never stop coming even if our characters are gone. In general I just think it's a really cool step and no other map has something kind of similar to this. But although the step is actually pretty cool to look at the outside the step itself is actually actually pretty annoying. So there's four bodies you need to find during this stage and for some reason we just could not find the fourth body which seemed to always have the switch. But after trial and error we managed to find the last body and we moved on to the next step. And you know on the topic of annoying steps this one is honestly no better. Essentially what you have to do is pull these levers in this maze in an absolute random order and if one sparks it means it was in the correct place. The step itself is pretty hard to explain but the annoying part about it is that every time you mess up the code you need to leave the maze and come back in. This then resets the switches and allows you to try it again. It's not exactly a hard step, but it's best described as tedious. But after 17 minutes of trial and error, we finally managed to get the correct combination. And that finally meant we were onto the final step, which also happens to be the most infamous step in the buried easter egg, the sharpshooter step. This step seems to be the one that people struggle with the most. So we all decided on our spots, and mine was at the candy shop. From looking at other people's gameplay, it seems like I had probably one of the harder ones, mainly because there's no real spot where you can stand where you have a clear view at every single target. So it took me a few tries, but after after a while I finally was able to shoot all of my targets. However, it doesn't really matter if I was the only one who shot all my targets because the whole team has to shoot all of theirs as well. And now not to throw them under the bus, but there was one member who might have struggled with this a bit more than the others. And that member was Milk, right? Mainly because he had 400 ping and you know his targets were moving so they were, they were a bit harder to shoot. But after 15 minutes, this happened. Got mine. Same. Got mine. I'm pretty sure I got all. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. We received all of the perks and finally completed the buried Easter egg. Going on to our final Black Ops 2 map now, we have Origins. We knew going into this that this was going to be a cakewalk, as long as we had people doing the soul boxes and the G-Strikes, and this should go by pretty quick. However, as I said, one man needed to be the one to complete the G-Strikes, so, you know, I took up the mantle and I went for the G-Strikes first. So I was relying on the team to complete all the staff pieces while I went to get the G-Strikes. So basically my POV is entirely the Gen 6 church. I mean, man, by the time I got the G-Strikes, everyone else had already had the upgraded staffs, which left just me to get the fire staff. I got the fire staff and immediately went to the the crazy place to go ahead and work on the upgrades. Getting the kills in the crazy place was pretty simple. I then went all the way to gen 6 and deciphered the code and thanks to chronorium.com I shot the correct torches. And after shooting the fire orb all we had to do was go back to the crazy place, get some more kills and I acquired the upgraded fire staff. So since we were playing Black Ops 2 Origins this next step could not have been easier. In case you don't know there's actually a glitch in Black Ops 2 where if you put the fire staff in the podium you can just go back to where you pick it up originally and re-pick it back up. Allowing you to put it down in the podium three more times to just complete the step entirely. This was a massive time save as it meant we didn't have to go into each robot to put the staffs down. This meant that we could immediately go on to the next step which is to summon the panzers. Before this step you need one person to go into the robots to press a button and then have another player throw a G-strike at its covered hole to break the seal. And now with me being the trooper to go ahead and get the G-strikes, I had to be the one to throw them. We did this pretty simply and sent Maxis to go do his thing, then we had to go ahead and fight all the panzers. And now for some reason I thought the panzers would be weaker just like they are in the Black Ops 3 version but no 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 no, the Black Ops 2 panzers they don't mess about. So you know what? I I got clapped, but you know, my team, they had it in the bag and the Panzers, they were no issues. So to be completely honest with you, before I even had a chance to realize what step was next, the peaceful zombies was already cooking and had already shot down the plane in zombie blood and got Maxis back. I picked Wait. him up. So like now what we need to do now is like- Did you shoot the Panzer? 
Dude, I already killed that bitch. Oh yeah, my god, Sandy, this guy already, is on he... it. It should also be noted that while I was getting G-Strikes and upgrading my staff, the boys were out here filling up all the soul boxes, which meant we already had access to the Thunder Punch, allowing us to get the punch kills in the excavation site, which meant we could upgrade our fists. And once we had all picked up the upgraded fists, at this point we were ready to finish the Easter egg. We all went to the crazy place and put our staffs away and started getting kills. And 58 minutes into starting our run, we had finally beat the Origins Easter egg. Yo, it's the Victus crew, guys. They're actually <laughs> After 15 hours, we were finally on to Black Ops 3. We had 9 hours to complete the last 5 easter eggs. Realistically, this should be in the bag, right? I, I mean, well, we haven't really got the time to be sitting around and wondering that, we just need to make a move on to Shadows of Evil. In my opinion, the best zombie map of all time. Some of the best atmosphere, wonder weapons, and plenty of side easter eggs. This map has gone down as a timeless classic in the zombie community. Originally going into Black Ops 3, we said there was going to be no ultra rare gobblegums, but after Shadows, we ended up using the ultra rares, I'll be completely honest with you, to help with the exhaustion. We also went into Shadows of Evil with two men down, as it was past Peaceful Zombie's bedtime, so he had to go to sleep. And for Milk, he just kind of disappeared. He, he just went off into the night and was never seen again. So with me and Tyler thinking we were going to have to go into this with two players, Matt rose from the dead to come help the boys with Shadows of Evil. Team Detective was back in business. Of course, we wanted to actually get the cutscene, so we did use the mod for Shadows of Evil to complete the Easter egg. But don't worry or anything, it didn't give us an advantage or make the Easter egg any easier. All it did was just let us get to the final step so we could actually see the cutscene. Now lucky for me, Tyler and Matt were both in my easter egg video on Shadows of Evil, so the steps were pretty fresh in our minds. We immediately got to work on the rituals and just 14 minutes into the Shadows of Evil run we had Pack-a-Punch open, but before we did the final ritual I was busy collecting all of the symbols for the egg. Now I don't know all the fancy tricks so I just did this the old fashioned way by riding the tram. So after doing the final ritual we had our eggs and we got to work on getting the souls. This is all relatively easy so we had this done pretty quick. The same can actually be said for the upgrade process of the sword as all you have to do is go pick up the Ark Oven from your character's respected area, and you've got to go to the ritual areas on the floor to summon the Margwas. You kill the Margwas that spawn in four different locations, and then take the egg back to the ghost, and you know, there's your sword. The only problem with this step is that Matt struggles quite a bit, because, you know, he's not the best, but he admits that, and he's proud. I'm dog shit, and I'm proud. After interacting with a book in Nero's lair to have the flag come down the subway area, we immediately got on the boot. We started with taking it to Nero's lair first, as I'm pretty sure that's the easiest one to do, and it went pretty smoothly, to be fair. We did manage to get it done on our first try. Going on to the next couple of flags, we had a plan going into this. Fear in the headlights is like a cheat code for this step. It makes an absolute cakewalk. And that was basically what we did for the last three flag steps. I used mine on the second, Matt used his on the third, and I re got it back and used it on the fourth. And after the flag step, we were on to the boss fight. And now being the world's smartest Call of Duty zombie player, I came into this with a plan. I brought Fatal Contraption in, which is probably one of the best gobblegums for the Shadow Man. We went in and we gave our souls to the keepers, and then the boss fight started. The way this boss fight works is that you interact with the keepers who make the Shadow Man vulnerable, and then you lay into him and interact with the ritual table to trap the shadow man. Easy, right? Well, yeah, it, it actually was. I'm not going to play around and be like, oh, did we fail? Because, you know, it, it was just pretty easy. And although we defeated the shadow man, this did not mark the end of the Easter egg. We still had to destroy the big gate worm. And because we had the mod on, it did make this step a little bit easier than it should have been. The way the mod works is that basically once you shock the rails once, it just keeps them on permanently. So all that meant we had to do was just call the tram and zap the keepers in the middle. So I got the shock in the keepers and Tyler called the train. And with that, the Easter egg cutscene played. So uh, just future Jake here, uh, the cutscene uh, didn't actually play like I said it did. For some reason, the second the tram hit the gateworm, the game just crashed, so we, we counted as a win because we basically had it right there. And that was the end of Shadows of Evil. So next up on the chopping board was the Rising Drac, and I'm going to be completely honest, we were getting a bit on the sleepy side, but you know, we powered on. And to start with the fatigue, we started to use ultra rare megas from this point on. But thankfully, the Rising Drac isn't a hard easter egg. If you're a veteran zombie player, then you're probably familiar with all of the steps with the Rising Drac easter egg, because you've probably done it about a million times. We started off the Rising Drac by filling up the dragons, which took us about 8 minutes, which for us was actually pretty fast. At that point, we had already decided which bows we were all going for, and I was left with the wolf bow. And now lucky for me, upgrading the wolf bow is one of the easiest bows to upgrade, with all you needing to do is just shoot the school down at the rocket test site and getting kills at three different locations. So once I did that, I waited for anti-gravity to kick in and I interacted on this platform so I could go ahead and get my arrow. Once I had obtained my bow, I immediately ignored it to go ahead and get the base bow again. I don't know who decided this would be a good first step, but you know. I went over to the teleporter and shot the small lights on top of it, meaning we now had to go around and shoot the wisp. After shooting it four times, it meant we could return back to the teleporter and go back in time. We picked up what we needed and memorized the code so we could enter it at the computer near the death ray. We did end up messing this up the first 
first time, but we had it on the second try. Don't worry, boys. After successfully entering in the code, we moved on to the Simon Says step. We started with the one near the death ray, and after completing that, we moved to the one near the rocket test site. And after completing both of these, we were finally ready to cool Dempsey down. After he had landed in the map, we picked up the golden rod and were ready to fill up the keeper. So this is where we experienced our first major issue with this run, which was that for some reason, although no one on our team had started the firebow quest, for some reason it was asking us to get kills with the firebow. This meant I had to go around and complete the firebow as well, which was a massive time loss, but you know, we move on boys. We got the firebow to fill up the keeper and after one hour and 11 minutes, we had filled up all of the souls required and were ready for the boss fight. I think everyone knows how the Derizon Drak boss fight goes at this point. You fight the panzers that spawn and wait for the wisp to appear on the floor. Then you just plant your Ragnaroks and lay into him with the bows. I did bring the XM53 Packer Punched in, which was doing work to the keeper, which allowed us to complete the boss fight in just seven minutes. After leaving the boss fight arena, we picked up the summoning key and we went to the first Simon Says computer to launch the rockets to the moon. And once the cutscene started playing, that marked the end of Derizon Drak. That near death experience, so. Oh my god. We <laughs> got near death, but we ain't reviving Dempsey. 18 hours into this challenge and we were now on to Zetsubo no Shima. One of the more complex easter eggs in Black Ops 3 as there's just a lot that needs to get done, but at the same time there's not actually that many steps. Let me explain. A lot of Zetsubo's easter egg is just getting the upgraded KT4. After that all you need to do is get free cogs and you're on to the boss fight. So the main challenge we have throughout this run is actually just upgrading the KT4. Going into Zetsubo no Shima we lost Matt again for this one so it was just me and Tyler. We started out like a normal game of Zetsubo. We got to work on the schools to get the squad and subway and open the map to the bunker so we could get power on. We then got to work on getting the KT4, so you know, we got the plant under the water, killed the zombie by the labs, and on the first spider round, we trapped one and extracted its juices. Honestly, so far, so good. Before I'd even come up with doing this challenge, we'd actually just finished the Zetsubo no Shima Easter egg with members of the Discord, so we knew exactly what needed to get done. So as the content creator, I of course picked up the KT4, and we got to work on upgrading it. So something that's required for not just upgrading the KT4, but the whole Easter egg itself, is that everyone in the game has to have completed their challenges. This means that lightning will now strike the challenge podium, and when holding out a shield, it will actually electrify the shield. I'll go into more detail what this is used for later on. We got set up and we went into the spider boss fight. And now me and Tyler must have went into this with the speedrunner mentality because we had this fight finished within 48 seconds. I think that's the fastest I've ever beat the spider, so you know, that was a new PB for me, but we picked up the tooth and we left the arena. After the spider boss fight, we also got to work on getting all of the cogs. So I used the Skull and Subway and I mesmerized this poster in the bunker, and around this time we'd also completed our challenges, which meant we had access to the electric shield. This allowed us to get the first cog. Getting this with two players is super easy as all you have to do is have one of you ride the zipline and the other one zaps it with the shield. So I went on the zipline while Tyler shocked it and just like that we picked up the first cog. The second cog is even easier as all I had to do was pop anywhere but here and that took you to the secret room with the second cog in it. Since we now had access to the electric shield we also got to work and get the next KT4 upgrade part. After Tyler shocked this cage I went inside and he sent me down to go ahead and pick up the liquid divinium. And I won't lie at this point I was so out of it I nearly forgot to pick it up but don't worry I came back to my senses and I picked it up before I came back to the surface. We then had the two worst steps of this easter egg, getting the AA bullet and the plant for the upgrade. We started on the upgrade for the KT4 first, so to do this I first got the rainbow water and then I went back to where we got the original plant and started planting a new seed. I watered it with the rainbow water and luckily we brought round robin into this run, which was really nice as it meant we didn't have to wait as long to flip rounds. And after watering the plant three times we had finally gotten all of the pieces to upgrade the KT4. And now the last step we had to get the last cog. To do this we first had to get an AA bullet. Now I personally hate this step as for some reason I just cannot get the AA bullet out of the plants. It just seems to be the rarest thing in the world for me to get. And it doesn't help that it seems like no one has a definitive way on how to get this every single time. But we went ahead and we planted a load of plants around the map and kept watering them with blue water and shooting them with a KT4. And eventually after enough plants we finally got the AA bullet. Oh, I got it. I was one who was left to shoot down the plane and after spamming every button on my keyboard we managed to shoot the plane down and pick up the cog. And with that we were ready for the boss fight. I brought near death experience into this so the boss fight itself was pretty pretty easy as all you have to do is just kill thrashers and shoot the spores on Takio when they're available. And boys, after a few shots in 4 minutes, we finally beat Takio and finished the Zetsubo no Shima easter egg. Two maps left with four hours remaining on the timer. Things were looking close, so we had to make sure we were on our game for these next two maps. We basically had two hours on each map to complete the Easter egg, and now although that looks like a lot of time, if we failed at any point throughout these games, it was pretty much game over for this challenge. So there, there was a lot on the line here. Matt rose back from the dead once again to join us for Gorod, so we had to squad back again. Gorod's Easter egg is probably the most scary out of all of the Easter eggs for one step specifically, the bomb step. But we'll get to that when we get there. We started out like any normal game of Gorod Krovi, turning on the power and getting all we needed for Pack-a-Punch. 
complete the three Groff modules and rode a dragon all the way to pack a punch so we can go ahead and start on our dragon strikes. During this time we were also hitting the box of immolation and got lucky enough to get the ray gun mark 3, making the lockdown step a piece of cake. Now next up on our list of things we had to do was get the gauntlet to get all the trophies. We shot the egg down and Tyler went into the sewers to go shoot the pipe so we can get the trophy that comes out of the toilet. We went back to the map and shot the trophy down from the statue and then we also went to where double tap is and shot the window with the shield blast so we can get that trophy as well, putting our trophy count currently up to 3. Then I went to go get the trophy that you get for using the dragon strike but I kind of forgot to pick up the dragon strike. So yeah I had to go all the way back to pack a bunch but you know we finally got the dragon I got distracted again. But you know this one wasn't entirely worthless it was actually a valkyrie drone round so I just killed one by this generator and turned that on as that then allows us to go ahead and get the code cylinder we need. So for the next step basically you've got to go around and turn a bunch of valves around the map but you know thank you to cronorium.com again for coming in clutch and it, it, it made this step super easy. After we got the code cylinder we returned it back to Sophia and entered in Kronos as the password. I also went back to the supply depot and activated the laser trap so we can get ourselves another trophy. And after going back to pack a punch for the third time I finally picked up the dragon strike and got the trophy at supply depot. This meant the last trophy we needed to get was in the safe so we started working on the dragon egg. We got to work on completing all the challenges and I went back to pack a punch to incubate the egg. After waiting a few rounds we picked up the egg again and went back to spawn to go ahead and get the gauntlet. I then went all the way to the bunker, punched the safe giving us the last trophy which also meant that after 55 minutes we could finally start on the challenges. The first challenge was Gersh. This step is one of the more easy challenges as long as you know where to look. All you need to do for this step is just follow Gersh around and shoot him three times and as long as you're listening out for him this step shouldn't be too much of a problem. And the Reagan Mark III makes this step super easy. Oh my god, I shot him twice, all in, like, literally before he even left, he was already gone. Oh, we're done. Oh, we're done. So yeah, after shooting him three times, he returned back to Sophia, and that was the end of our challenge. We knew at any moment it could be the bomb step, and of course, while I'm just not looking, Tyler presses the button and the bomb step starts. So I rushed over, and we were sweating bullets at this point, you know, this could be the run ender. But luckily, me and Tyler had a plan. As long as I remember the first three locations, and he remember the last three locations, we should be in the clear, and surprisingly, this step went really smoothly. A lot of people just record their screens when this step comes up, but if you're playing two player I'd highly recommend doing this. But yeah after interacting with the last bomb that was the end of our challenge. The third challenge was the mangler step. Now from personal experience this step is super glitchy as sometimes it'll just randomly stop following you so you need to make sure you're close to him. So to help with this step I made sure to bring in undead spam walking. This made the step super easy as I could just focus on guiding him to Sophia and once he got to Sophia that was the end of our challenge. The next challenge we had was the groff module outside the map challenge which is probably the easiest challenge to complete as all you have to really do is just kill zombies outside the map. Once the groff module was finished all we had to do was for our dragon and collect the package and give it back to Sophia. Super easy challenge. The next challenge we had was the Valkyrie drone challenge and this one took us two attempts as in the first attempt it was going pretty smoothly until about a thousand zombies came to come clap my cheeks. It turns out my, my only two teammates went to pack a punch leaving me, the person completing the challenge, to fend off all of the zombies. So you know gold star to Matt and Tyler but of course this meant that we failed the challenge but all was good as we managed to bring another gobble gun we brought into this game, Idolize. Idolize is exactly like in plain sight except better as it makes your entire team invisible for 30 seconds. Seconds. And with three activations, it meant we had one minute and 30 seconds to guide the drones to Sophia, making this step super easy. And if you're having troubles with this in your own games, then I definitely recommend bringing in this gobble gun. And the final challenge we had to complete was the lockdown challenge. This was another super easy challenge, as it's just like the original lockdown, except with manglers. Now there is a way to cheese this step by just training around the last mangler, but we did it the way it was intended. Obviously, if you have the Rega Mark III, this step becomes even easier. So we managed to get the key card and made our way back to Sophia, which then gave us a battery, and then we gave that to Nikolai, and then all that was left was the boss fight. We got ourselves set up and stepped on the grate to go to the boss arena. After pressing the button to release Nikolai, the first thing we had to do was take care of the dragon. Now as long as you know how to avoid his attacks, taking care of the dragon is not a hard task. I also got the L4 siege before we went into this boss fight which made this dragon fight a lot easier. And after completing the three stages of the dragon, we had taken it down fairly easily, however there was this one moment that got us spooked, but you know we had it planned out, here's what happened. Oh, you're reviving me somehow in the cutscene. Let's go. Nice, oh, let's go. <laughs> now, next up was Nikolai. Now, I'm going to show you how to cheese this fight. Now, if you remember the gobble gun we talked about earlier on, Idolize, if you use it against the Nikolai boss fight, he will literally just stand there and let you lay into him. So, one death machine and some Reagan Mark III shots later, and the boss fight had been completed. We were finally here. After over 21 hours, we were finally onto the last map, Revelations. We had 2 hours and 30 minutes to complete this map, so as long as we didn't fail, surely we had this in the bag, right? We knew that being deprived of sleep and exhausted from playing zombies, we would need some more manpower to help us finish what we had started. So boys and lads, I introduce you to... 
With Grim at our side, we started off revelations like any normal game would go. We immediately got to hit in the box for good weapons and specifically little Arnie's. We also went around picking up parts for the Keeper and activating the corruption engines. I shot the gravestones and got to work to locating the random rock in the jump pad so we could have a Keeper come and work his voodoo witchcraft magic to turn it into a tape. Again, I don't really know who thought this would be a good step, but either way, once we obtained the tape, we took it to Nact, which allowed us to move on to the next step. When hitting the box, Tyler and Grim got lucky enough to get the little Arnie's, which allowed us to immediately get to work on throwing them in the holes in the Apothecon. And with a few lucky max ammos, this step also took no time to complete and allowed us to get the next tape, which we took to Kino the Totem. After listening to the tape, we were now on to the most infamous step of this easter egg, the bone step. Grim got lucky enough to get the Apothecon Servant and had already upgraded it by shooting the rocks in the sky, which meant we have everything we needed to start collecting the bones. We started in Nact and one by one we went around the map collecting the bones. I think anyone who's tried this easter egg before will agree that the hardest bone to collect is the one you get from the wall running section. After many shots, however, we collected that bone and went on to finish the rest of them. We returned back to Nacta and Totem where the bones were now lying on the ground, and after shooting it twice with the Apothecon Serpent, we had collected our final tape. We put this tape in the dig site at Origins, then we went on to the next step where you've got to shoot the laser beams around the map at rocks in the sky. This redirects the lasers towards Nacta and Totem where Sophia is then materialised into the map. After returning to Nacta and Totem to meet up with Sophia, she guides us towards the Kino Teleporter, which then allows us to complete the next step. However, we must have been so sleep deprived at this point that we got a little bit too attached to Sophia. I am just a man. The sister in that little gap. <laughs> Teach me your way. Oh. So yeah, once we got to the Kino Teleport, we went to Samantha's room and picked up the Cronorium. And after return, we put it on the lectern and were on to locate in the Apothecon eggs. When we were completing this easter egg, we were using the help of accelerated ideas, and for this step, they list off locations where they can spawn. Now, when we were playing, we clearly didn't see the bit at the bottom that states, no, these are not all of the possible locations. So we continued to look in those locations over and over again until we finally realised that there was more locations than just that. Luckily, it didn't take us too long to actually find the eggs, so we had all four of them filled up with souls around 50 minutes into the run. Then all that was left was to start hunting for the symbols. I found two relatively fast, and Tyler and Grim found theirs not long after, meaning we were finally ready for the boss fight around the 58 minute mark. For us running on pretty much no sleep and having some brain dead gameplay, that wasn't bad at all. We got ready for the mini boss and met up in the projector room. The end was in sight only a few more steps and we had completed the challenge. We went into this mini boss fight a little bit nervous as we knew if we failed here we would no doubtably have failed everything we had been working for for the last 22 hours. After entering in I immediately went towards the book. Tyler and Grim were throwing little Arnie's while I read what order the symbols were going to be in and the same was done while I was entering in the symbols and after putting in the right code the bit that we were most worried for started. Essentially the way this part works is that there's four stages and to progress throughout the stages you need to kill all the markers at spawn. The first stage was the anti-gravity stage. This stage isn't super hard as long as you continue jumping from spotlight to spotlight. Also, during this entire segment, you only get one max ammo, so you need to use it wisely to ensure you don't potentially run out of ammo. Big game, man. I really did. I really did mean to do that, I swear to God. Yeah, let's just say I started sweating bullets when that happened. Either way, we killed the Margos and moved on to the next stage, which was the Void stage. This one went by super fast as we were able to just focus on the Margos, and then we were immediately on to the next stage, which was the Lightning stage. And now, in my opinion, this is without a doubt the hardest stage out of all four of them, as walls come up to block your way, which will cause tense moments to happen like this. Oh, I am near death. Don't worry. Oh, I'm fucking trapped by a zombie. Not again. Game. Oh my god, game, please. It removed the wall and then immediately put it back up. What the actual fog? Yeah, my asshole was clenched during this part, but after reviving Grim and Tyler, we were onto the final stage, which was the fire one. Again, if you just stay at the top areas of the arena, you're able to just focus fire on the Margwood, which is what we did, allowing us to get out of this whole segment and pick up the summoning key. We were nearing the end closer than ever. All we had to do now was throw the summoning key at certain objects around the map, and we were onto the boss fight. Now, this step should be simple enough, but something that still hasn't been patched since launch happened to us. After throwing the summoning key at the fountain in Verona, we went through the portal and for some reason the summoning key just disappeared. So the issue with this is I don't know how this occurred or how to fix it so I've tried going back through the portal to look for the summoning key and nothing was working. At this point we started panicking. Unlike the other times that we considered restarting the run, at this point we didn't have time to start an entire new run. So we had no other option but to figure out how to fix this. So I got to looking online and apparently if the summoning key randomly disappears, the only way to fix it is to either down or pick up a death machine. Luckily Tyler had near death on him so he didn't lose any perks but seriously Treyarch, why wasn't this ever fixed? Anyways, we threw the summoning key at the remaining items, making sure to avoid any portals, and after throwing the summoning key at the crystal ball in Shangri-La, we were finally ready for the boss fight. This was it. The last battle. 
Everything we had built up towards the last 23 hours was about to come to an end at this final fight. If we failed here, it would have all been for nothing. We had met up back at the Kino teleporter and prepared for the battle of a lifetime. I'm just playing with you lads, we just brought in Fatal Contraption and we had this fight over in no time. But seriously though, after pressing F on the altar to trap the Shadow Man, that was it. It was finally over. As we watched our Primus crew wield the staffs in the Great Wall, we could finally conclude that yes, you can in fact beat every easter egg from World at War to Black Ops 3 in just 24 hours. And that was it, we had finally completed the challenge in just about 23 hours. So for some final thoughts on the whole thing. When looking at our final time, you can absolutely beat this faster than we did. At the end of the day, we are just casual players who don't really know anything about speedrunning into easter egg, or you know, for some players, any of the steps at all. So for us personally, beating all of this in under 24 hours is a massive accomplishment. Playing zombies straight for 23 hours is so draining, and with no sleep, your morale just drops with the constant anxiety of whether or not you're going to be able to complete them in time. Especially for us, once we got to Gorod, we knew that if we failed any of those attempts we wouldn't have been able to complete the challenge. So with all of that in mind, this challenge was stressful to say the least. But yeah, it's finally done. Massive thanks to Matt, Tyler, Peace, Milk and Grim. Without you guys this video wouldn't have been possible at all. And yeah, other than that, I really hope that everyone has enjoyed this video. For the record, the script I've been reading now is over 10,000 words long, so having to voice and edit the whole thing myself, I'd really appreciate if you guys could just leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That would really mean a lot, but make sure you guys do go follow me on Twitter and also join the Discord, all the links will be below. And yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys all in the next video.